I greet the church in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Seventh-day Adventist Church has a culture and practice of reading one chapter a day from the Bible. And for this morning, we are on Second Chronicles chapter 6. I'm going to invite our selected readers to come up and read the chapters as follows. We're going to have Brother Praise read the first 10 verses and Sister Shelley is going to read the next 10 verses, Elder Nyati is going to read the next 10, and Dr. Ayn Lovu will finish off the chapter. At this point, I invite our readers to come up with 2 Chronicles chapter 6. Brother Praise will begin reading. Then Solomon spoke, the Lord said, you will dwell in the dark clouds. I have surely built you and exalted us and a place for you to dwell in, in, in forever. Then the king turned around and blessed the whole assembly of Israel, while all the assembly of Israel was standing. And he said, Let's be the Lord God of Israel, who he has fulfilled with his hand. He has fulfilled with his hand while he spoke with his mouth to my father David, saying, since the day that I brought my people out of the land of Egypt, I have chosen no city from any tribe of Israel in which to build a house that my name may be, may be there. Nor did I choose any man to be a ruler over my people, of my people Israel. Yet I have chosen Jerusalem that my name may be there and I have chosen them to be over my people Israel. Now if, if it was in the heart of my father David to build a temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel, but the Lord said to my father David, whereas it, it was in your heart to build a temple for my name, you, you did well in that it was in my heart. Nevertheless, you shall not build the temple, but your son who will come from your body he shall build the temple for my name. Attention to the Lord's prayer and his plea for mercy. 
Oh Lord my God, hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence. May your eyes be open towards the temple day and night. This place of which you said you would put your name away. May you hear the prayer you said your servant prays towards the Yeah. 
very much the readers that have uh, taken time to share from the word of the Lord. There is a blessing in reading from the word of the Lord. Amen. What I find interesting is that the chapter ends with a plea and we do not know what happens until we flip over to the next chapter. And this is the reality of prayers. We utter prayers and we wait for the response to come in the next chapter of our lives. A few reflections come from this chapter of the day. First of all, we are finding uh, the commissioning or dedication of the temple. And Solomon is the man who offers the prayer. He is the king of Israel. And the challenge is, if you are in any position of, liberty, uh, I mean of uh, leadership, there is a lot that can happen when leaders stand up and take a lead in prayer. Amen. When this is done with faith, heaven will respond in the next chapter. Secondly, notice that as Solomon um, blesses Israel and gives his prayer, the first focus, point of focus that he uh, pins on is giving praise unto God. He addresses God before he can address men. Thirdly, as we go into the contents of the prayer, notice that as he prays, he starts by addressing his family issues before God. And I found a good model as we look at the third point on how to structure our prayers. Maybe our prayers don't go beyond the first step. The first step relates to what happens in my home, my father, myself, the influence of my family. That's what Solomon starts with. And thereafter, in the second step, he looks at neighborly issues. And um, you, you're going to find this very interesting at verse 22. If anyone sins against his neighbor, now he has moved from addressing issues that relate to him and David. He's addressing neighborly issues. From the neighborly issues, he goes to the national issues at verse 24. If your people Israel are defeated. From the national issues, from a defense perspective, he goes to the economic issues at verse 26. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain, Israel was an agrarian economy. So not having rain impacted on the economy. And I want to challenge us as we pray. Have you gone beyond the family and personal issues? Have you prayed for national concerns? Have you prayed for economic concerns? Issues that have to do with um, the rain and agriculture, of course, at verse 28, where there is famine in the land. And verse 28, whatsoever, we are not limited to this. At verse 28, he goes on to say, what of a prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone in this place, let it be answered. And the other issue that we are going to find is that he begins to move the prayer from this house of prayer where he has said, God does not even dwell in here. He is not contained here. He answers these prayers from heaven. But we are building this temple in his name. So temples are built in God's name, but they, they don't contain God. God cannot be contained in these structures. Now he goes on to the interesting part. At verse 32, as we come to an end, concerning a foreigner who is going to pray, do according to all that which he or she asks for. You know, many a time we, 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 we treat temples, we treat worship as exclusive 
of those that are not like us, those that do not belong, those that have come from afar off. But prayer and the temple are places that are inclusive. Everyone is welcome. And lastly, should the children of Israel be removed from this temple and they find themselves in a foreign land where they are taken captive and they turn and pray facing Jerusalem, facing this temple, answer their prayers, dear Lord. What is the lesson here? The lesson is God is not geographically limited. Even when things do not work in our favor and we find ourselves in a foreign land, things are not working out for us. God can still answer those prayers having allowed us to be taken captive. He answers the prayers of the free man and the prayers of the captives. Do we have any contributions that are coming from the floor before we roll over to the spirit of prophecy? Could I see by a show of hands at this point? Any contributions that are coming from the floor? Please, please come over, Pastor. Come to the mic. A a anybody else? All right. Uh, maybe because of the lights, I might not see any other hand, but I'll give this opportunity to the pastor just to make one comment and then we'll move on to Spirit of Promise. Oh, please come through, Elder. Just come and sit over here. And this one to two. The last thing I have to say is remember the message of David. One lesson that I'm learning from here is that uh, Solomon is built from the Lord's relationship with him, with him, with David. Many a times, as leaders, when we are trying to move the positions of influence, we try by all means to first of all destroy our predecessors' efforts so that we can do the But this is one lesson that we have. We can adopt from Solomon that let's adopt what our predecessors have built. They have built them. Uh, 